What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. So if you watched my Ryzen timelapse build video, you know that I got the GTX 1060 Strix from ASUS South Africa. So this video is gonna be about me reviewing the 1060 Strix and benchmarking it and seeing how it performs. So let's get into it. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. You can check out some of the new products they got in from G-Skill and Cougar Gaming. So visit rebeltech.co.za to get the products you're looking for at a low price. First off, let's start with the size of the 1060 Strix. This is quite a big GPU, measuring almost 30 centimeters or 12 inches in length and 13 centimeters or 5.3 inches in width. This may be an issue for some cases that doesn't have a lot of space, so before you buy, just make sure it'll fit in your case. The 1060 Strix has three of ASUS's wing blade design fans that pushes more air at a lower noise. Also, when the Strix is on idle or cooler than 50 degrees, the fans does not spin at all. They only start up when under more load, and even when they start, they are extremely quiet. So here's a quick sound comparison between idle and load. Okay, so this is the GPU on idle. At the moment, the fans is not spinning. It's about at 46 degrees, the GPU, and the only noise you're actually hearing is coming from my all-in-one cooler. Again, this is the GPU under load. The moment the GPU's temperature is at 64 degrees and the fan speed is at 50%. Now for temps, the 1060 Strix had an idle temperature of 46 degrees in my case, with the fans not spinning and under load it never went over 70 degrees or 50% fan speed, even when pushing it to the max. Now from my testing it looked like the Strix used about 116 watts of power on stock settings. So it doesn't use that much power and will be able to run perfectly on a 500 watt PSU that has an 8 pin connection. And if you were wondering, yes, the Strix does have RGB. You can control the lighting with the Asus Aura software that has a few different effects like static, breathing, strobe, music and temperature. You're also able to sync all your ASUS or Aura enabled devices together, so you'll have an awesome in-sync lighting system that you can go show off. The next up for I.O. you get a DVI-D port, two DisplayPort 1.4s and then two HDMI 2.0 ports which is perfect for VR gaming. And then at the back of the GPU, you get two PWM fan connections that lets you connect two additional fans. The connected fans will run on the same settings as your 1060s fans, so if your GPU is on idle, none of the fans will spin. But when under load, both the GPU fans and the additional connected fans will start up. Now, not a lot of people will use these, but it is a nice additional feature that can help if you don't have a fan hub or enough PWM connections on your motherboard. A very nice feature on all the Strix GPUs is the included backplate. The 1060 Strix has some cool grey textures with the grey ROG eye as well. Now unfortunately the eye is not backlit like the 1080 Strix. It would have been nice if it was because the more RGB the better of course. But now let's get into the benchmarks. For my overclock I was able to push an additional 100 MHz on the core and 400 MHz on the memory with ASUS's tweak tool. With the tweak tool, you're able to switch between some presets ASUS already made for the card, but also make your own overclocking profile. The test system I used for my benchmarks had a Ryzen 1800X at 3.95 GHz and 16 GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB memory at 3000 MHz. 
all of the games I tested was in 1080p because unfortunately that's all I have at the moment. But now into the benchmarks. Now for Doom, I unfortunately wasn't able to run it in Vulcan, it kept crashing on me, so I was only able to run it in OpenGL. So as you can see, my overclocking didn't really get that much more performance out. On most of the games I only got about 2 to 4 extra frames. This just shows that ASUS has already pushed the 1060 close to its max. So if you are looking to overclock your 1060, just use ASUS's already OC mode in the tweak tool. It's just gonna save you a lot of time and almost get you the exact performance out. But like the benchmark showed, you're able to play every game over 30 FPS and by disabling some of the graphic enhancing settings, you will get over 60 FPS on high settings. This makes the 1060 perfect for 1080p gaming. And now, unfortunately, like I said, I could not test the 1060 on a higher resolution, but I know it will be able to play games on 1440p and 2K with a bit lower settings very easily. So if you are looking for a great 1080p graphics card, look no further than the 1060 Strix from ASUS. And that's it for the video, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, please like, share, subscribe and comment. Also a big thanks to ASUS of Africa for giving me the GTX 1060 Strix for my personal system, big thanks to them. Also a big thanks to you guys for watching all of my videos and actually making this possible for me. If you want me to review more graphics cards, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get my hands on a bit more. But anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll check you guys later. Cheers guys.